Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue the videos with AR Foundation. I wanna show you how to actually block any type of touch events that are doing a ray cast against plane managers. The reason for this is because a lot of times we are designing UIs, and when we have a UI and we actually have touch events, it might cast a lot of problems when it comes to doing instantiation of objects with the AR plane manager. So I wanna show you how we can block those events from happening. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing today by just looking at this video. Just gonna go ahead and hit play. And you can see that I have a UI in the middle of the screen. I'm also using the plane detection. I am basically touching in different areas, but not on the UI, because when I press on the UI, you're gonna see the, the red letters, and that means that the ray cast on the floor was actually blocked. So I had questions about how to make this work if you wanted to you know, use a UI component so that the objects that were beneath it weren't actually getting generated. So this is actually a, an example of how to block raycasts in augmented reality. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So some of the components that I have are the AR session, AR session origin. And in the AR session origin, I have an AR plane manager. This is you know very common you just to the videos that I've done in the past. I also have what's called an AR Raycast Manager because the AR placement with Block UI, which is an implementation that I did, actually requires a Raycast Manager so that we can actually, you know, place objects and instantiate those objects in the scene. So what I'm going to show you is I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the code and show you the implementation. So the first thing that I do is I add a require component. Like I said, I, I want to make sure that the AR Raycast Manager is is required. I also have the actual prefab that we're going to be instantiating. I also have the UI panel. We need that because if I want to toggle it on and off, I want to be able to you know, have a reference so that I can do that. I also have a reference to the button so that we can use it for toggling. I also have a little log message, which I'm going to show you on the UI. The AR Raycast Manager, you know, the reference of hits. So this is a list of AR Raycast hits. And I also get the component right on the awake method. The toggle method is really simple. I'm just basically doing an auto operator on the UI panel, so it hides. And if it's showing, if it, and if it's showing, it's going to hide it. I also get the toggle button text by getting the component, the text mesh pro U GUI component that is inside of that toggle button. And then I just change the label based on the state of the active text. The most of the work is in here. This is what you guys really need. If you're looking for, you know, making sure that you're blocking raycast with UI elements. So what I do is I check to make sure that we have a touch count greater than zero. If we do, I get the touch as a reference. I start in a variable, call it touch. And then I just do this on the on the basically on the face begin when you're touching. I don't want to do it more than once. So as soon as you touch the screen and go into instantiate it, when you lift your finger, it's not gonna do anything. It's just basically every time you touch. Then I get a touch position. Then this is gonna be the method that I'm gonna show you. Right now, I just I ended up doing doing it as an extension method. So it's an extension of a vector, vector two. As you can see here, this is a vector two. And this method is no part of Unity. This is just something that we created. And it's called is point over UI, UI object. So I'm just gonna show you how that works. But basically that's going to return true or false. If it's true, that means that we are basically over a UI element. If we are, I'm going to basically just log the text, and then we're not gonna get executing, we're not gonna basically do instantiation of, on, of any objects on the plane. So otherwise, if the, the touch area that I'm touching on the screen, which is a vector two, does not have a UI element, which I show you in the video, if it is set to true, that means that we are over a UI element, so that means that we're not gonna be instantiating the cube, Otherwise, if it's set to false, that means that there's no UI on the way. I'm going to also check to make sure that the raycast that I'm basically raycasting, that I'm actually trying to check, it has an AR plane. If it has an AR plane, that means that I'm going to be instantiating an object. So the only time when we're going to be able to instantiate an object is as long as we have an AR plane and as long as we're not over, we're not over a UI element. So let me show you this method, which is doing most of the work. So this is an extension of a vector two, and I decided to do that because the vector two position is the one that is required. I also checked to see, okay, are we over a game object? If we are, I know that we're not over a UI component, so I'm gonna return false. Then the next thing that I do is I'm just making sure that the event, the position that I'm passing in is within a element that is of type UI. 
If we are, then I'm just going to be returning, yeah, we are basically colliding with the UI element. So I'm gonna return the count. I'm gonna to check to make sure the count is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, I'm gonna return true, which means that the is point over UI object is going to be true. And in, the, in that case, it's not going to be instantiating any object. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity and I'm gonna show you some of the other components that I have in here. So if you look at the AR session origin, I have the AR placement with block UI. This one takes a default cube and it's just a very simple cube, which is the one that I just showed you just a few minutes ago. So it's gonna go ahead and delete that because we don't need to look at that anymore. And then what I do is I just pass that as the place prefab, that's going to be the object that we are instantiating. And then the UI panel is important because that's the one that I'm hiding and showing. The reason why I do that is because I have this button that is basically hiding and showing this, it's doing a toggle. And if it's not shown, then that means that I can do a rate cast and I can actually place an object. But if it's shown and I'm touching this area right here, I shouldn't be instantiating anything because we're gonna go through that method that I just showed you. Then the next thing that I also have, if we go back into this object, I also have a reference to the toggle button, so that way we can you know, set this to on and set it to off if we wanna show it or hide it. And then I just have also a log element in here that is going to display whether I am basically blocking the raycast or if we're not blocking the raycast, which you can see right here. I'm basically logging that information with the day and time and also just displaying block raycast the reason why I did this is because I wanted to see the seconds because if I do it multiple times, we can see it executing multiple times. So that's everything that I wanted to show you as far as how to block the, basically when you have a UI element and you're trying to do an AR, AR ray casting on the play managers that we have. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out LearnXR.io where I'm basically doing VR training. I'm also working on augmented reality training right now. And also make sure to check out my patreon.com site where I'm basically posting early access source code and also everything that I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you very much guys.